It occurred to me during the search that uh, there were a number of really successful university presidents who had been deans of top law schools. And I said, well, if I were looking for that person, where would I find him? And he said, well, the second best person is so-and-so. And you know, you might consider the third best person who is somebody else. And I said, well, how about the first best person? And he said, well, you can't get him. He's locked up at Columbia University. Well, I, ca I came down and met with the search committee and they went back to New York and they called and they said they wanted both of us to come down. Before we came down, I was looking at the map and trying to see exactly where Houston is located in Texas. The phone rang. It was Molly Crownover calling me to say welcome to Houston, welcome to Rice. It made me feel so uh, welcome. I guess I asked you after that trip, I asked you, well, what do you think? I said to David, it's time for another adventure. David Lebron, you have accepted the summons of the board of Rice University to serve as its seventh president. And I guess it's been an incredible 18-year adventure. Definitely. This presidential medal signifies your investiture. No, David's very focused on quality. David's good at sniffing out quality. Rice is all about quality. We have it in our students, we have it in our faculty, we have it in our staff. And I think that became pretty clear to David uh, quickly. And so he, he felt like this was a place that in, inherently had a commitment to quality that was going to make it possible to really do great things. And I remember quite clearly still the first day that I uh, met him, he um, wanted to have a conversation with a group of faculty and he, he brought a lot of questions and he listened um, carefully. And, and that's, um, that's one thing that stands out for me about uh, President LeBron's tenure and that is his propensity to listen. So before I actually met him, I actually heard about him. I got a chance to know the janitor of my hallway. Her name was Tomasa. She and I became good friends. And while we were talking one day, she mentioned to me uh, something about the president. And I, I said, tell me about the president. And she said, well, es un presidente diferente. That's what she said, he's a different president. She said that, first of all, every time she walked into that office area and he was there, he would always greet her. And I know to us it may not be a big deal, but to her, that was really important. She was like, this president always greeted me. He would always tell her that she's welcome to help herself to a drink and, you know, get a soda, whatever. And she said, it's, you know, it's just a small gesture, but it meant so much to her because he treated her with dignity, with respect. Like, she's a part of the team. I have become a huge fan of David Liebren. Of course, everybody says, and Ping. His partnership with, with Ping has been really, really powerful for the university, both kind of within the hedges and, and what happens here, as opposed to outside the hedges and, and Ping's leadership at Asia Society or the, or the United Way or, or you name it, has been very visible and, and very powerful. When people have asked me about David's greatest accomplishment, I said it was landing Ping. Her external exuberance, I think, is unique. And behind the scenes, I'm, I'm sure she has meant so much to David in terms of sage advice and encouragement. Welcome to Rice. The advice I got when I was touring colleges is go to a college campus, appear lost, and see which students, which professors help you find your way in, in the campus. And when I came to Rice, I actually was lost, and there were a number of students who like directed me to the building I needed to go to. So when I came to Rice, I expected it to be collaborative and warm and nice and, you know, Southern hospitality, but I didn't expect the university president to welcome me into his home and me along with a thousand other students. It's important to remember like that is not 
the usual, that's not the norm. Even when a campus, even when a university does a good job of being really friendly space, I think it is kind of his, his leadership approach that you know he, he really wants to be on the ground and also really understand and get to know people in a really warm and engaging way. David came at a really interesting time in the history of Rice and at an interesting time in the city where lots of changes were going on in the city. He listened, he took the time to understand Rice, to understand Houston, and frankly, I think to really become a Houstonian and to understand how important Rice is to Houston, but how Rice wouldn't exist without the city and the resources of the city and figuring out a way to open up the university to the possibilities of the city. He has always talked about his interest in connecting Rice to the city of Houston. This is really an effort to engage in both directions and really make sure that Rice is doing more for Houston and not just occasional service projects or things like that, but really seriously offering probably the greatest asset that we have as a university, and that's the research that we produce. David's responsible for setting the cornerstone of Rice University to really think beyond the hedges, to really, and ION's one of those springboards for that mindset of industry coming together with a great university to really expand those ideas and really transfer those into commercial ideas. It's very much recognized and noticed in the broader Houston business community, the degree to which David has really kind of made it a strategic priority for the university to be more broadly engaged, not just with Houston, but uh, really with, with Texas, with the international community uh, and, and the world. And Rice is better off for that. We must be bold. We must be Rice. I don't think that there's been a president since uh, Edgar o Odell Levitt who has so had an impact on Rice University. One thing that's incredible, if you look on the campus over the last 18 years, the construction that's occurred, the magnificent architecture, and then we have the public art program started in 2008, which now encompasses 34 pieces across the campus. You can tell the transformation that has been made at the university at the end of his tenure with the new buildings, with the diverse faculty, with the diverse student body. We just have so many wonderful things to attract more students, our top tier students, to attract top rated faculty. He's done so much for this, this university. It's not only enough to have a diverse campus, but I think it's more also to think about how are we providing students, right, not only the education, but the means to succeed after they leave Rice. And one of the things that I've been really, I've been really impressed with about President Lebron's leadership is his dedication to ensuring the Rice investment could come to light. David has a philosophy he's very proud of, and it's that talent deserves opportunity. That resonates with me, and I think he's really brought that to bear at Rice University, where socioeconomic status should not limit the education that you get. He was president during a time that was very unique, you know. We had a lot of things going on in the past two years, whether that's social justice-wise, COVID-19, and it personally was a lot to handle as a student, so I can only imagine as a president. But he found the people that were experts and he always listened. He always tried to make it um, to where the community and the Rice community was the number one priority. And over the past 18 years, we've experienced a global financial crisis. We've experienced a global pandemic and through all that time we've come out well under David's leadership and while maintaining our core values and traditions here at Rice. We have experienced a time like no other in Rice's history. The expansive growth, right, of our university not only within the hedges, but within the community. And I think that's a testament to a leader who is truly dedicated to serving, a leader that is truly dedicated to 
learning how can we always grow, how can we always be better. And it puts him right in the ranks of not only one of the best presidents that Rice has ever had, but I think one of the best presidents Rice will ever see. This is a person who we are going to miss and who is going to miss being at the helm. This is a person who has guided Rice to a much, much better future, and we are so blessed to have had him. I, I, I brought King up because I've noticed that the applause is louder when she's with me. This has really been a great adventure. It has. We are so grateful to Rice, grateful to Houston. Thank you for the many friends we made. This is just a remarkable community. We are so grateful to everyone at Rice, all the great people in Houston that, that we met, and our alumni and friends around the world. Thank you. Thank you.